And um, how long has the PCOS been going on for you? Oh, at 15. Were the anxiety and depression, did those come about after your yeah. first period? So not when you were younger? Not when I was younger, no. Okay. Hello. I am so excited to look at your brain with you. I'm so excited to be here and to meet you. <laughs> awesome. So um, what we'll do is start with just a little bit of reviewing why you're here and what your goals are. And then um, we'll take a look at some results and um, end up with recommendations. Um, let's see here. So first of all, the goals that you said is you'd like to better understand the causes of your PCOS symptoms and how to treat them. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And um, how long has the PCOS been going on for you or when was it first diagnosed? So I'm 26 now and the symptoms started pretty much right around my first period, which was about at 15. Oh, okay. But I was not diagnosed until 2018. Gotcha. And what are the most problematic symptoms for you? I would say um, cycles have always been irregular. So that's been the number one, you know, struggle I've had. I've also had to work really hard to maintain clear skin. I'm very acne prone. Mm -hmm. And then I also lean to the more anxious, depressed side um, of things. And I have to work, I would say, harder than the average person to um, maintain my mental health also. Were the anxiety and depression, did those come about after your yeah. first period? So not when you were younger? Not when I was younger. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hormones really have a strong impact on yes. you, don't they? As I have learned. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and is there um, a cyclical nature to your mood issues? Um, as I've gotten more in tune with my body, I would definitely say so. Is there anything that's been particularly helpful for you? Honestly, the number one, you know, like thing that has helped PCOS in general for me has been to reduce stress, hmm. physical, mental. As soon as I take a few things off my plate, I notice that my symptoms really start to improve, which is a good thing, but also sometimes feels annoying because, yeah. of course, life is never going to be stress free. Be really careful about. Yes. It. Yeah. Um, is there? And you prefer a holistic approach. I do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oftentimes for um, PCOS and for PMS symptoms, you know, oral contraceptives are recommended. And you have tried those in the past. I've tried, I think, six or seven different pills. And I know that they work great for a lot of women. But for me, unfortunately, every pill, I experienced different side effects, whether it was my hair falling out, my acne getting worse or gaining 30 pounds out of nowhere. So after that last pill, I just said, I have to figure something else out. Gotcha. Yep. And do you have just out of curiosity, because some women with PCOS, um, they'll have an ultrasound. Yes. Um, did they, did they visualize you know, the cystic ovaries? They did. I do have the polycystic ovaries. Gotcha. You know, when we're looking at the brain, I think some of the things we can learn from the brain with respect to PCOS would be looking at your stress response, yeah. looking at the health of your brain. We know that there's hormone imbalances or hormone deficiencies that can show up as lower blood flow on the surface. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can look at some brain scans. Next. Okay. The first set of scans is looking at blood flow to the outer cortex of the brain or that outer layer. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, we want nice, robust blood flow in that outer layer. If you see any dents and holes on your scan where we don't expect it, that means there's lower blood flow in that area and lower blood flow means lower function. Gotcha. Okay. Here's your concentration scan. And okay. so... Generally speaking, what I would say is we see a pretty healthy um, image. Overall, 
pretty healthy. There's a few areas that are a little bit lower than ideal. So I'm going to talk about those areas. Sounds good. Um, by the way, it looks like you might have had a head injury, minor head injury somewhere along the way. Did you have a good head head bump anywhere that you're aware of? Not that I could think of specifically, but I did do gymnastics for a really long time. Oh. And so that could definitely Good influence. chance that you bunked your head I here and there. I fell quite yeah. a few times, yeah. but nothing, yeah, I recall specifically. Yeah, absolutely. No serious head injury. And, and we do know that even minor head injuries where you don't end up in the hospital, don't get diagnosed with a concussion can still have an impact. Especially things like gymnastics where you're doing a lot of smaller injuries, you know, head bumps that don't land you in the hospital, but yeah. repeated low-level head injuries can also have an impact. So we do see what looks like you may have had one or more head injuries that did have an impact. Nothing um, that looks permanent. So we're looking at with a little bit of support, I think we can help these areas heal. So first thing I notice is temporal lobes. A little bit low, we can see a little bit of a dent here. So I'm going to circle the whole lobe. Mm -hmm. Temporal lobe is here and here. You can kind of see here on the lateral sides, it's a little low. And so from the side view, this is here. Temporal lobe is really important for formation of memories, um, long-term and short-term memories. Also for mood regulation. When it's lower, there's more likely changeable mm -hmm. moods. So gotcha. um, temporal lobes play a role in impulse control as well. And again, a little bit of a reduction there. Um, not dramatic, but very probable that your head injuries impacted the temporal lobes. They're really susceptible to head injuries from any direction. Now, um, we also see that there is a little bit of lower blood flow in the parietal cortex. I'm going to circle that. Parietal cortex is like the brain manager. So what that means is it pulls together information from different parts of the brain and puts it together to make it make sense. Um, Reading a map is an example of parietal lobe function. So taking like a flat image and making it make sense in a three-dimensional world. Okay. Would this area have anything to do with why I'm so bad at directions and all that stuff? Oh, that's interesting. So for sure, parietal <laughs> lobe is going to have some um, impact on that. Like I said, reading a map and... Um, I'm so, people joke that I'm not a good co-pilot because I just... Oh, interesting. Yeah. You get disoriented or yes. you're not, just not sure which direction is north, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah okay, that's interesting. Could. It absolutely could. Maybe that will improve as we improve your brain I hope health. so. That would be great. The next set of scans is looking at the internal brain. So we're looking through the brain. And now blue means relatively low blood flow. Red means moderate. And white means high. And here is your... Oh, no. <laughs> It's interesting. You have a very interesting internal brain here. So let's talk about what we see. The first thing I notice is let's look for where we want to see the most blood flow, right? Yes. In that cerebellum. And yours is a bit quiet. So that cerebellum, we really want to see red and white. Mm -hmm. And we see a lack of white, right? Mm -hmm. And so cerebellum, as I mentioned, it coordinates movement. It works with our prefrontal cortex for focus and concentration. Now, where is the majority of blood flow or where's the highest blood flow for you? We've got a couple of areas where it's very bright. One is here in the center, and this is the thalamus. Thalamus is part of the limbic system or the stress response system. And yours is pretty bright here. And that can make you now a little bit of activation there is good for internal motivation. But a lot of activation can actually increase the stress response. It can increase negative thoughts and depression. But your basal ganglia is very bright. And a little bit of activation in the basal ganglia, again, can be good for internal motivation. But a lot can be a little bit demotivating and it can make you more prone to anxiety. So we have some high stress response showing up in your internal brain. This is very interesting. And um, so a lot of times that means rumination um, or having trouble like turning off your brain, say if you want to sleep at night or if you know, you're worried about something, it can be hard to um, shut your brain down. Yeah. 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 That, that resonates. Yeah. Well, like you said, um, it's very easy for me to be self-motivated and to be productive and all that stuff. But it, at the same time, it it is a struggle as well but it feels like i have to if that makes sense you have to like there's no other option like i don't 
do well if I feel like I'm being lazy. Like I just am very good at being productive. So you have that good internal motivation. So that's one way this is serving you. Yeah. Right. And then, but then there's a balance. Right? It's hard for me to, to just relax. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. So that, that extra activity then can make you prone to shutting your brain off is hard, relaxing is hard. Um, and, uh, and then again, this makes you more prone to anxiety and depression and changeable moods. That would make sense. Yeah. So I think that the stress response here, you know, as you mentioned, the one thing that you've noticed really helps your PCOS symptoms is calming your, your, the demands in your life, calming the stress. Right. And that makes sense because this is your brain and it is looking like your stress response is high. So the more that we can work on calming things at the brain level in conjunction with doing things day to day to reduce the um, stress on your, in your life, um, I think the more successful we'll be here. That would be so great. Yes. I'm very excited. Yeah. Good. This is, this is great information. And I think this really complements what we know about your hormones and we can work, work with the brain, knowing how your brain is functioning to calm the stress response at that level and to improve blood flow to the surface Mm -hmm. so that you have the healthiest brain possible moving forward. Yeah. So I think what we'll do now is just look at how to, what we're going to do. Okay. What's our, what's our action plan here? So I'd like to um, bring in some omegas for you. And because of the hormone piece, we're going to do some alternating omegas. Okay. So we're going to alternate a fish oil. I'm going to have you use a fish oil in the first half of your cycle with an evening primrose oil in the second half of your cycle. And what that does is we're actually using healthy fats to create, to give your body the building blocks for the hormones that we need at that type of cycle. Okay. So it's a really cool way to just use, use those essential fatty acids as building blocks for the hormones that you need. Um, so fish oil. It's going to be follicular, half of your cycle, and then the luteal is going to be evening primrose oil. Okay. Do you feel like you, you seem like you're pretty organized. You feel like you can do that alternation pretty easily? Yeah, that's totally fine with me. Anytime I've ever visited a doctor, I'll say, you know, whatever I have to do to feel better, I will do it. I will stick to the routine. I just want to feel good. You're an excellent patient. (laughs) It's fantastic. Okay. So we're going to also add something called brain and memory power boost. This is the third component, healthy fats, um, multivitamin and the brain and memory power boost is Dr. Amen's combination Mm -hmm. that you're probably very familiar with. Yes, It's my favorite nootropic vitamin. Um, and really what it's doing is, is sending that good blood flow to the brain where it needs to go to help heal. Do you have any questions for me? I don't think so quite yet. That was all very helpful information. So How I'm, are you feeling about the recommendations? I feel great. Like I said, I'm always very gung-ho when I get um, advice or recommendations on what to do. My struggle has been getting the recommendations and finding <clears throat> the right care and the right doctor. So Perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. Brush. I was looking forward to this for a really long time. Nice. And it's nice to get some clarity and and perspective on. I have my brain scan at home, so I've just been kind of looking at it, but obviously I don't know what it means. So, yeah. so now we've got this some, is great. Yeah. Some interpretation that makes it more meaningful, right? Yes. Yeah.